Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the Institute for Cultural Advancement, which is brought to you by the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County. We thank you all for joining us for this first virtual ICA session. It looks like most people have joined, so let's get started. Today's topic is communicating during COVID-19. But before we begin, we ask that you kindly put yourself on mute. Due to the volume of participants, we're asking that you hold your comments and questions during this presentation. We will provide your contact information so that you can connect with us directly. Additionally, the session is being recorded. Both the audio and presentation will be made available on the Cultural Council YouTube page next week. Okay, so here's a quick look at the agenda for today's session. First, we'll start with a quick introduction of Sharp Think, who developed this webinar. Then we'll give an update on the current efforts taking place at the Cultural Council to support your organizations. From there, we'll tackle today's topic, navigating communications in this time of uncertainty. We'll start by discussing how COVID-19 has impacted communications with a review of some of the key industry trends. From there, we'll discuss some of the most important communication strategies to consider as we move forward in this pandemic. We will end today's session on what it means for cultural organizations with tangible ideas for you to consider as your communication and marketing plans evolve. Great. So I think now is a good time to introduce your host for today. My name is Nicole Janik. I'm a senior vice president here at Sharp Think, and I oversee our Florida office based right here in West Palm Beach. I'm a West Palm Beach native, former reporter from the Palm Beach Post, and I spent the last 15 years working on a variety of national and global brands and organizations. I'm joined by my colleague, Josh Schoenfelder. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. I'm a VP account director based at our headquarters in New York City. Uh, together with Nicole, I manage the Cultural Council account and have worked on a variety of leading arts, culture, design, and lifestyle brands for more than 10 years. Great. Now we'll take a few minutes to tell you about Sharp Think, the PR agency of record for the council. Who we are. Sharp Think is an award-winning agency specializing in media relations, influencer marketing, social media, and special events. The agency employs about 40 people between our offices in New York City and here in West Palm Beach. Sharp was founded by in 2000 by Jim Brodsky, so we are celebrating our 20 years this year. What do we do? We seamlessly bend high octane creative thought with blue chip strategic rigor to deliver smashing results for our clients. Who do we reach? We specialize in helping best in class brands reach influential target audiences across a wide range of categories, arts and culture, consumer lifestyle, education, philanthropy, architecture and design, health and wellness, and more. Here's a snapshot of some of the clients that we work with. You'll see here that our clients represent a broad range of categories relevant to your organizations, particularly in the art and culture category. I also wanted to draw special attention to the middle row of logos, as these are some of the brands, organizations, and special events that we've worked with within the destination. Okay, so that's just a quick look at who we are. Now let's discuss how Sharp and the Cultural Council have been working together to support all of you during this pandemic. As most of you know, the mission of the Cultural Council is to champion, engage, and grow the cultural community in Palm Beach County. During this time, we know that support is more critical than ever. So the Council has developed a few new initiatives that we wanted to share with you today. Since March, the council launched COVID-focused media initiatives. We've leveraged the social channels to support the industry and our members, and created fundraising opportunities and artist support initiatives. So let's talk a little bit about each one of these initiatives. First, the council has been focused on supporting its members at the organizational level by highlighting all of the wonderful, wonderful virtual programming available. We've been doing this through media outreach, as well as through the Cultural Council social media pages. We'll share some of the highlights of those on the next slide. The Council also has created several new programs to support individual creative professionals during this time. 
One is hire a musician. This social media driven program allows people to dedicate a song to a friend or loved one for $50. The program then connects the council's social followers to a local musician who records the song for that special individual. The cost of the song dedication goes directly to the musician. The council also has created the Palm Beach County Artist Relief Fund, which is an effort to support creative professionals of various disciplines who are currently out of work because of COVID-19. This fund will provide small grants of $150, $250, and $500 to qualifying artists that apply. Applications for the grants are now open, and more information on who qualifies and how to apply can be found at palmbeachculture.com. The Cultural Council also has provided information on other national resources for both institutions and individuals on the website. So please be sure to take a look. And lastly, in celebration of all of the wonderful musical talent right here in Palm Beach County, the Cultural Council has created a Spotify playlist highlighting these local musicians. To access the playlist, go to Spotify and search for stay at home with hashtag Palm Beach Culture. We also provided a link to the playlist in our resources guide at the end of this presentation. We wanted to let you know that the council has also assembled a task force of community leaders to tackle long-term solutions and is developing a robust marketing plan to help jumpstart cultural tourism once the time is right. So here's a look at some of the recent press coverage that we have received from our outreach. At the local level, we've been able to highlight the Artist Relief Fund, and nationally, we found success highlighting the virtual experiences in a number of publications. While we have a couple listed here, we also wanted to mention that southernliving.com and Yahoo Lifestyle also covered our virtual experiences. Securing this coverage is a top priority for our team, and Sharp and the Cultural Council will continue to highlight these efforts during the COVID crisis. Social media. For social media, the council wanted to spotlight some of the successful posts they've had across each channel. On Instagram, the Hire a Musician content was a hit. It had more than 8,000 views. On Twitter, the virtual experiences were spotlighted, and on Facebook, the new Spotify playlist was introduced. So that concludes an overview of the Cultural Council efforts. Please be sure to check back with the Palm Beach, Palm Beach Cultural website regularly, as we'll be able to post updates and make resources available there. Now, Josh is going to walk you through the COVID how COVID-19 has impacted the way we communicate. Thanks, Nicole. All right, so COVID-19's impact on communications. COVID-19 has made a significant impact on the media landscape, both traditional media and social media, which has presented new challenges and opportunities for brand marketers and PR professionals. In this section, we'll identify some broad trends that are happening in the media and what this means for today's communications programs. Before we dig in, we wanted to share a quote that we think conveys the essence of some of the challenges that several of us are facing today. The sooner we realize the world has changed, the sooner we can accept it and make something of what we've got. We liked this quote because it acknowledges that there will always be things outside of our control. We may have dealt with big challenges before, like natural disasters, times of war, or national conflict, and so on. But despite these challenging forces, we have the ability to adapt to changes, to stay resilient, meaningful, and connected to our audiences. How should brand communicators shift in the current environment? What should we do? To answer these questions, we want to first explore how the media landscape has shifted. On the next several slides, we've outlined several of the trends that our team has observed in the last few weeks. These include, forget what you know about the past way to do things. In other words, a lot of the principles that you may have adhered to before COVID-19 may no longer apply. One of the first things that COVID-19 has taught us is that we really need to rethink everything we're doing and saying at this time to make sure that it's appropriate, reflects our brands and institutions positively, and engages our audiences in the current environment. Speaking of engagement, this has really taken on a whole new meaning in the last few weeks. Um, in general, events are canceled, stores are closed, and virtually everyone is spending their days at home. 
because of this, people are spending more time online than ever before, and brands are seeing engagement for their content rise by 20%. The insight here is that a lot of the outlets that existed previously for entertainment or distraction or recreation are no longer, and audiences are turning to devices to aspect to, um, to access this aspect of their lives. As a result of all this extra time with fewer things to go out and do, attention spans have increased. This has actually driven a completely opposite way of thinking regarding the best length of content on social, as before COVID-19, the general recommendation was to keep content short, say 10 to 20 second nuggets. And now people are more interested in long form content. This means that brands have total permission to share content that's 45 minutes or an hour, something like this. You may have seen a sharp increase in the amount of Facebook and Instagram lives, whether it's a cooking tutorial, a workout video, a craft segment, and more. Picture perfect no longer applies. Another trend tied to the idea that people are looking for content more than ever, and that we're all in the same boat being home all day, is that content no longer needs to be perfectly produced. Before, brand marketers needed to be very meticulous about making sure that each visual asset was on brand, was beautiful, and so on. Now, brands can swap quality with creativity. Audiences are more interested in tuning into content that will capture their attention, even if it's scrappy and not perfectly edited. What's more, there's something very relatable about home shot content and that this is the content that everyone is sharing on their personal social media channels. So brands that are also publishing this home shot content is more in line with what is happening on a broad cultural level and has the ability to connect and resonate with audiences in a more meaningful way. It reminds people that we're all in this together. Finally, the popularity of home shot content has opened up new opportunities to bring people a little behind the scenes of today's organizations offering audiences access to people, places, and stories they normally don't have access to. One example of this is the Met Museum has launched a curator chat, a Q&A with Brenda Kumar, who is the assistant curator of the modern and contemporary art at the Met. Instagram followers are invited to ask Brenda any question, like how did you select pieces for the exhibition, or what is something that surprised you while curating the show? Kumar provides personal responses to the followers' questions, sharing interesting insights that keep the museum's fans engaged. A virtual vortex. First, we wanted to acknowledge um, all the great work that a lot of the institutions are doing at this time to launch virtual experiences. There's been a lot of great content published on websites and social channels that is reaching audiences looking for arts and culture. On this slide, we wanted to share some encouragement that it doesn't appear that virtual experiences will be going anywhere in the foreseeable future. In some ways, we may have created a new normal in which audiences are expecting more content more often from digital resources. Virtual programming can be a critical component to reaching your audiences all year long. Here are some thoughts on what is popular right now. Live streaming has skyrocketed in an unprecedented way of 525% in March. What is great about live streaming is that this can be very casual. It doesn't need to be super scripted. You can come up with a great idea, plan a time and run with it. Some popular virtual content that's, that we've been seeing include museum tours, live cams or live streams, um, children's educational seminars, live performances from musicians and artists. Kindness is king. Another trend is that not only is the content length, production level, and the format changing, its tone and messaging have needed to change. Brand communications, whether it's PR, advertising, social media, all of this needs to be sensitive to the current environment. You don't wanna be perceived as opportunistic or capitalizing on the crisis. The shift of tone is often humble, kind, and grateful. Messaging that instills this idea that we're here to help and we're all in this together. And particularly for arts and culture institutions, the role that so many of you play is that of enriching the community. And there's a sense of togetherness that can support your brand communications at this time. 
Also tied to this trend, something that we're seeing on the rise in media is the popularity of feel-good news, uh, special human interest stories that add a little joy and hope to what can be a challenging time for people. These types of stories are appearing at all levels of media, like CBS Uplift to the Today Show Good News and many more. E-commerce goes social. On this slide, we recognize that not all of you have e-commerce platforms. This isn't necessarily a recommendation for everyone to start e-commerce, but if you do sell merchandise online, now may be a good opportunity to support those products through storytelling on social media. Specifically, in a moment like this, there are a lot of consumers that are interested in supporting organizations that are giving back to the community. Um, people want to help by providing resources to those in need, including artists, service staff, and others in the community who may be impacted economically. Tying sales of products to a good cause creates an emotional connection between you and the consumer, and it instills a sense of meaning to the transaction. So similar to the feel-good stories I mentioned on the slide before, media are often interested in reporting on companies that are giving back to support groups of people in need. This can be a PR effort on behalf of your organization and something that can be shared with traditional media to let others know the good work that you are doing. Um, and then finally, digital advertising soars. On this last slide of trends, we understand that a lot of you oversee budgets and determine how um, and determine how you're allocating for advertising, particularly for your mission-based marketing programs. The idea here is that advertising always aims to reach people where they are. Given the current environment, there's been a dramatic drop in out-of-home advertising, like billboards, radio, and signage. This is replaced by digital advertising, which is anticipated to increase by 13% this year. According to the recent data, we're seeing an almost even split among advertising that supports mission-based, cause-related, and brand equity messaging. I'll, I'll now hand it over to Nicole, who will guide us through COVID-19 communications strategies. Thank you, Josh. Now that we discussed some of the major industry trends taking place, we wanted to talk through some of the communication strategies that should be considered in this new COVID era. What better place to get a little inspiration for this topic than from Nobel Prize winning physicist and chemist Marie Curie. She says, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is time to understand more so that we fear less. Hundreds of years later, this statement couldn't be more true. As communicators, the more we can do to help people understand what's happening, the less fear they will have. So let's discuss how we can do that effectively. Best practices. First, let's start by running through some best practices for communicators. Many of you may already be on the right track here, but we certainly thought it was worth a discussion. The first bullet here is really about staying connected to your resources. Stay in touch with any national and regional associations in your specific sector. Sharing knowledge and resources at this time is just so tremendously important. And as a destination for the public, I'm sure you're all already monitoring the health organizations at the national, regional, and local level for information. Of course, it's important to create a communications plan for each of your audiences, organizational functions, and employees. It's important to map out who you need to communicate with, what information do they need to know, and what is the best way to deliver that information. Having a communications plan in place will help your institution be prepared, organized, strategic and thoughtful, even in a time of uncertainty, which helps reinforce your position as a community leader. Of course, you want to be prepared in advance for media inquiries. Identify who will serve as the key spokesperson during this crisis and prepare statements in advance so that you are able to move quickly on a media request. Consider what news topics are relevant to you right now. For example, one of the newest developments of the COVID spread is the way that animals are actually contracting the disease. Every organization with animals should be developing statements right now that answers the following questions. What protocol is in place to keep animals safe? What will happen if an animal shows symptoms or tests positive? Remember, having statements and policies in place in advance eliminates the potential for a no comment, 
which can make an organization seem ill-prepared, unaware, and disorganized during this critical time. Lastly, as hard as it sounds, we must plan for the future. This means looking three, six, nine months, even a year from now. What will your organization look like? How will that needs to be communicated? Will fundraising efforts increase? Will future ex exhibitions be put on hold? Be sure to consider all the scenarios so you're prepared to communicate them in a thoughtful, proactive manner so that no one is left in the dark. Adapt messaging and content. So as Josh mentioned earlier in the presentation, brands and organizations are reevaluating their messaging and content to ensure that they are being sensitive to the current situation. As you think about your future communications, be sure to focus your messaging on your organization's purpose, mission, and impact on the community. I'm sure many of you have seen Amazon, Walmart, and NBC are just a few of the brands who have already shifted their messaging to thank their employees or first responders and relay the messaging, we are in this together. Many of you on the call are fortunate that you're a nonprofit organization, so this type of messaging is likely inherent to your marketing. Next, we wanna make sure that you're creating messages that will resonate with a tone that's authentic, comforting, helpful, and informative. Just remember, you were a community resource prior to COVID-19, and you still are today. Show your audience that you are in it with them. More than ever, people are wanting to connect with organizations that not only acknowledge that this is a challenging time, but also lets them know it's okay to escape every once in a while. And lastly, take stock of your imagery. It's very important to make sure that the visual communications align with your updated messaging. It's important to eliminate crowd shots and those of people closely interacting, as it may come across as completely tone deaf during, this current, during the current restrictions. Leveraging multi-channel marketing. Just as we discussed, discussed developing a communication strategy as a best practice, here we'd like to little, dive a little bit deeper into what does that mean. First, it's important to consider all of your audiences. Board members. These are key decision makers and often major donors to your institution. So make sure that they have the most detailed information possible to help inform their decision-making process. Employees. This group is the most essential to your operations. While they may not all be full-time status right now, maintain consistent communications with them on what they need to know, whether it's health and regulation standards or government assistance opportunities to the future plans for your organization. Current members. This is your most loyal group of visitors and donors who are looking to your organization as a resource during this time. Whether it's educational tools, entertainment resources, they are counting on you to keep them informed and quite frankly, to keep them distracted. Potential members. This is an important one. While your traditional marketing efforts may be halted, staying top of mind with future potential visitors is an important right now. Becoming a trusted valued resource in this time of uncertainty will drive long lasting affinity for your organization, potentially growing your member and donor list down the road. So now that we've identified the core audiences, how do we reach them? This is when multi-channel marketing approach becomes critical. It's important to identify the best channel to reach each audience and have a plan behind it. Here, our graphic is highlighting how the four core elements can work together, paid, earned, shared, and owned. Paid, as we mentioned earlier, we're seeing many advertising changes in this current environment. If your paid campaign was focused on taking a trip or planning a visit or a special offer, you may wanna consider putting it on pause. If your organization is wanting to thank first responders or send a mes message of encouragement to those at home, consider a paid digital or social option. Earned. Being proactive and prepared to work with media will keep your organization top of mind with members and potential visitors. We'll talk a little bit about this in the next slide on trending topics. Owned. These channels are the best platforms to offer resources to the community through your website and your newsletters. Dedicated emails or a newsletter to your board and employees 
are the best vehicle to, re to regularly communicate important updates and initiatives. Shared. These channels have historically been a way to amplify your efforts across paid, earned, and owned. But with the rise of live streaming that Josh earlier mentioned, it's also an important platform to keep your members and potential visitors connected in real time. Engage with media. As you think about your messaging and what stories your organization can tell, we wanted to share some of the topics that are trending with media today. In the next section, Josh will actually talk through some thought starters and ideas that may spark a newsworthy idea for you as well. The community outreach give back. This is one of the biggest trending stories about organizations coming together to support the community, their employees, and their constituents. For example, the LA Times reported a $10 million artist release relief fund that was just started in response to COVID. Resources for kids and adults. With everyone doing online schooling, and especially as the summer approaches, this story is going to continue to resonate. We're seeing coverage from major news and lifestyle publications, including HuffPost, CBS Sunday Morning, Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, USA Today, CNN, the list goes on. Artists creating under quarantine. How Corona is influencing artists and their practice has been a topic of a number of stories, including this ongoing feature in the New York Times called Art in Isolation. Art challenges. This is a fun one. Forbes recently covered an initiative from the Getty Museum that asked its online followers to recreate famous artwork with household items. The internet responded with thousands of at-home quarantine masterpieces. Now, I'll pass it back to Josh to talk to you about what all of this means for you. What it means for cultural institutions. In this section, we'll share a variety of ideas based on the trends and the general strategies that we've mentioned with regards to how this can directly apply to your institutions. This quote resonated with us. It says, remember that in the darkest of times, you turn to the arts for comfort, and sciences for hope. What a great reminder that in the toughest of circumstances, it was the arts and science communities that really helped bring everyone together and move everyone forward. Our ideas are in four different buckets. They include creating engaging content, how you can blend technology and creativity, enhancing social media, and connecting with the community. Creating engaging content. So many of the cultural institutions have been doing a fantastic job creating virtual experiences. Here are some additional ideas that build on that that could be helpful as you continue to promote your missions. These include two general categories, including see and do. For see, these are activities that allow your audience to watch something enriching, whether it's educational or totally for entertainment purposes. These include leveraging your talent to perform an activity, whether it's music, dance, art, and so on. One really exciting example that I personally um, really liked is that many, um, and many of you may have seen, that the original Broadway cast of Hamilton uh, surprised a nine-year-old fan who had tickets to see the show before it was canceled. The cast reunited and performed for her, creating a really heartwarming experience that she'll remember forever, um, and one that also was a viral sensation. For Do, these are activities that engage your audiences to actively participate, typically an interactive tutorial or a learning experience. These could include art lessons, science lessons, or crafts, and you can provide timely hooks by leveraging upcoming events and holidays like Easter, Earth Day, or Mother's Day. One example that really stood out to our team here is um, Wendy McNaughton, who's an illustrator and a self-described quarantine art teacher who has been leading um, hashtag draw together with Wendy Mac live on Instagram each day of the week. Wendy leads kid-friendly drawing and painting session um, and really injects a lot of fun and, and personality into each live stream. Blending uh, technology and creativity. In this current time, we're seeing a lot of interesting content, and one way to make sure that it's working really hard for you is to record it and catalog all, all your content into an online library so that everyone can access it throughout the year. By doing this, you're creating a database of material that can be regularly promoted throughout the year as well. It can exist forever. Creating Zoom backgrounds is another great way to promote your cause 
provide a resource while still staying connected to a popular trend. While the Cultural Council is developing Zoom backgrounds that represent a sampling of cultural partners, there's opportunity for every institution to create their own images and share them with their networks. And the best part is you may have, you may already have everything that you need for this. Zoom allows images in a variety of popular formats like JPEG, GIF, or PNG with a recommended 16 by nine ratio. Each user can simply upload a desired photo. So it's simply a matter of sharing your fun or interesting images with your audience. These can be branded with your logo so that you're maintaining brand awareness through this effort. Enhancing social media. So we've talked about tone and visuals. Another thing you can be doing is leveraging the popular movements that are happening. One example in the art community is the museum moment of Zen in which people are sharing inspirational content, photos of destinations that can't be accessed right now, shared with the bright light in, in people's day. These trending movements on social are, are great ways to participate in a national conversation and drive visibility for your content. Another way to enhance your social presence right now is by leveraging user-generated content or UGC, sharing the posts of your fans and followers um, uh, sharing their posts that are that are in regards to your institution. UGC may not have been much of a priority in the past as you may have been focused on professional photography and video, but we're seeing that organizations are doing this right now and it's a great way to connect one-on-one -on -one with your audiences and, and thank them for their support. This also keeps you fresh in the minds of your followers. You can ask them to share their favorite moments of being at the zoo, their favorite show they saw at the theater, um, art exhibit, and, and so on. Finally, as you're considering the various strategies and content for each channel that you operate, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or LinkedIn, there are so many. Um, another one for you to consider that has really taken off in the last few weeks is TikTok. TikTok is a 15 second video sharing app and the channel is focused on videos that really show fun personality, um, are often funny or integrate music or dancing. Primarily used by younger Gen Z types, a lot of people have gotten on board with this app recently as it's really a great escape. It's offering levity in this time of anxiety. So on this slide here, we have a screenshot of an example um, from a really standout organization on TikTok, and that's the San Diego Zoo. The channel features many animals of the zoo, often with humorous voiceover from a narrator or popular music as soundtracks to the animal videos. The example here is a slideshow of animals that are male. So male lions, penguins, hippos, to the tune of Boys by Lizzo, and it's awesome. Connecting with the community. Finally, we wanted to share some ideas on how you can connect directly with your audiences, developing new programming that gets the community involved. This could be partnering with local schools or organizations for kids to create curriculum or other learning opportunities. Another idea is to create virtual field trips for students, offering them special access to exhibition, shows, aquariums, and more. Another thought starter includes partnering with a local artist or craftsperson to create COVID-inspired products to benefit those in, me in need. Um, these can include face masks that represent your organization, whether that's art, culture, or science. Finally, Another idea includes developing at-home creativity kits with activities inspired by your mission that consumers can purchase online. This could include crafts, games, hands-on learning, and more. Great. Thank you, Josh. That concludes today's webinar. We really appreciate you taking the time to spend with us this morning. We hope you found this informative and helpful as we navigate these uncharted waters together. As a reminder, Josh and I are happy to take questions directly. Please feel free to reach out to us with our emails shown here. Again, this presentation will be um, and the full recording will be available on the Cultural Council's YouTube channel next week. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend.